Hello, my name is Marion Spearman. I'm an associate director within the California Department of Corrections and Rehabilitations, and I work in the Division of Adult Institutions. On September 2020, the United States District Court for the Northern District of California ordered CDCR to implement remedial measures to achieve compliance with the Armstrong Remedial Plan and the Americans with Disability Act. One of these measures is to have all correctional officers at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility, better otherwise known as RJD, who may have interaction during the course of their duties with protected class members to wear body-worn cameras. CDCR proactively decided to also require all correctional sergeants, not just correctional officers, at RJD who interact with protected class members wear body-worn cameras. On January 19, 2021, body-worn camera technology was implemented at RJD. On March 11th, 2021, the United States District Court for the Northern District of California issued another order to implement remedial measures and have all correctional officers at five additional prisons wear body-worn cameras. Similar to RJD, CDCR proactively required that all correctional sergeants at these five additional prisons wear body-worn cameras as well. In addition to RJD, the five prisons are California Institution for Women, California State Prison Corcoran, California State Prison Los Angeles County, Kern Valley State Prison, and Substance Abuse Treatment Facility and State Prison in Corcoran. Body-worn camera technology was implemented at these five prisons during the months of July and August 2021. Using body-worn cameras at these six prisons will provide CDCR and other stakeholders the opportunity to evaluate their effectiveness in a correctional setting. The purpose of body-worn camera technology is to promote officer safety, enhance prison security, assist staff in conducting use of force reviews, enhance the detection of criminal activity, and provide insight into allegations of excessive or unnecessary force. Honestly, I thought it was a great move and we were actually surprised, I would say, um, that it hadn't happened sooner. So uh, excited to see the cameras on board and provides an extra level of security. Body-worn cameras are worn by all correctional officers and sergeants who have interaction with the incarcerated population in housing units and day rooms, programming and culinary areas, visiting rooms and recreational yards. This technology provides an unalterable audio and visual record of interactions between custody staff and the incarcerated people they come in contact with during the course of their shift. All footage is retained for a minimum of 90 days. Footage of uses of force and other triggering events are to be retained for five years. It's all after the fact. None of it is live viewing. Um, all body-worn cameras are, you have to dock it before any information is downloaded off of it, um, and it's not meant to view live. So the only time we access the footage is when there is an incident that has occurred and there's a triggering event and the lieutenants have to submit a, a request for it. So the lieutenants view it first um, and, and pick that time frame of when the incident happened. So there's no, okay, they're just gonna pick whatever time they want and listen to the whole eight hours of our shift. That's it's not a thing. Body-worn cameras are to remain activated and recording throughout their shift and can only be deactivated during specific circumstances, including restroom breaks, during peer support, under the peer support program, while making an emergency telephone call, and during a medical assessment, appointment, or consultation wherein the respect for confidentiality is assumed. The body-worn camera 
can be deactivated while present in court and during confidential settings like probation or performance reviews, interviews with an informant or a victim of a PREA allegation, parole suitability hearings, any discussions related to possible corrective or disciplinary action, or for other authorized reasons outlined in the statewide body one camera policy. Based on questions from staff, CDCR policy for when a body one camera can be deactivated was updated. A body one camera is deactivated during an unclothed body search of an incarcerated person. If the incarcerated person becomes assaultive or disruptive during the course of the unclothed body search, the staff member is to reactivate their body one camera when it is reasonable to do so. The body one camera is to remain activated when an incarcerated person is being transported. The second update is when an incarcerated person being transported arrives at an outside hospital, private doctor's office, or medical clinic. The body one camera is to be powered off. If an incarcerated person becomes assaultive or disruptive in the course of the medical visit, the staff member is to power on their body one camera when reasonable to do so. At the conclusion of a medical visit, when the transportation team and incarcerated person are in the vehicle, the staff members are to power on their body one cameras before beginning the transport to their next destination. Our current departmental policy authorizes management to review triggering events outlined in the statewide body worn camera policy. These include any use of force incident, riots, suspected felonious criminal activity, any incident resulting in serious bodily injury, great bodily injury, and all deaths, all Prison Rape Elimination Act allegations, allegations of inmate misconduct, allegations of staff misconduct made by an incarcerated person, employee, visitor, or other person, incidents that may potentially be referred to a district attorney, employee reports of on-the-job injury, and claims by incarcerated people to the Department of General Services, Office of Risk and Insurance Management, and the Government Claims Program. Managers and supervisors are not authorized to randomly review or view recorded video footage for routine supervision of staff. However, if staff misconduct is identified during an authorized review of a triggering event, the video recording can be used as part of the employee disciplinary process. It's important to reiterate that body worn camera footage is not to be reviewed solely for the purpose of general performance review, and recorded footage is not to be used to monitor staff members arriving or departing from their job sites. The policy covers a lot of our officers' um, concerns. A lot of them are concerned about if they're being live viewed or if they're being monitored all the time, but the policy states that um, you shall not use the body-worn cameras or the ABSS to monitor employees' day-to-day -day activities or coming and going of their um, routine activities. So it's great. Many law enforcement agencies across the country have implemented the use of body-worn cameras. Research into the use of body-worn cameras by law enforcement shows significant benefits, including accountability, transparency, and officer safety. In recent conversations I've had with Sacramento Police Chief Daniel Hahn and Soledad Police Chief Damon Wasson, they both expressed the same sentiment of how valuable body-worn camera footage is in resolving citizens' complaints against their employees and when evaluating the uses of deadly force by their patrol officers. The use of body-worn camera technology is new to detention locations. The Colorado Department of Corrections, 
the Louisiana Department of Public Safety and Corrections, the Nebraska Department of Correctional Services, and the Wisconsin Department of Corrections have implemented the use of body-worn cameras within their prisons. Even though this technology is new in a correctional environment, CDCR readily acknowledges its use will provide transparency in resolving allegations of officer misconduct, promote more accurate fact-finding, and increase staff safety. As an example, after a staff assault, management can evaluate the circumstances surrounding the incident to see, if necessary, how we can potentially improve policies and procedures to enhance officer safety. This is a good change. We've seen it as a positive in our clinics and in our work environment. And that um, after the installation of the cameras and after everything goes back to business as usual, it's one more level of security, one more level of comfort that CDCR is looking out for our best interests and making sure that we stay safe and secure in our day job so we can get home to our families. This concludes our informational video. In closing, I want to thank you for your hard work and dedication and for doing your part to promote and enhance the safety and security for everyone who works in our prisons.